And we'd like to welcome you to today's Ultra Edit webinar entitled Power Up with PowerShell, Exploring the New Integrated Terminal in Ultra Edit 2023. Uh, my name is Ben Schwenk. I'm Chief of Staff for Ultra Edit. I'm joined today by Bradley Hawkins, our, our Ultra Edit product manager and C++ extraordinaire. Um, also, Johnny Pickle, our Ultra Edit lead developer. Between the three of us, we have nearly 50 years of experience working with Ultra Edit, working with our users and various programming technologies. But today we'll be demoing PowerShell specifically within the context of Ultra Edit's terminal. We're gonna look at a few ways of leveraging PowerShell's flexibility and power to increase your productivity. And this webinar isn't necessarily a deep dive into PowerShell from experts, but more of an introduction to its usefulness and a demonstration of how Ultra Edit and PowerShell make a good coupling. One of our fundamental commitments for Ultra Edit is to make tools available to developers that allow them to expand their prog productivity the way they want. So our aim as a team is to always avoid forcing our users into one specific way or method of working or thinking about or getting something done. And that's something that PowerShell is very good at as well. So it only makes sense that Ultra Edit and PowerShell make a great pairing, and we're excited about our plans for the future there, which Brad will speak to a little bit later. Uh, we will have a Q&A at the end of the presentation, so please type in your questions as they come up. Also, we will be recording the webinar and sending out a link to attendees following the broadcast so that you can always revisit this content or share it with someone else. So with that said, We'll move into today's topic on PowerShell and Ultra Edit. Brad will kick us off briefly by covering the basics of PowerShell, and then we'll move into some demos. So with that, Brad, I'll hand things over to you. Thank you, Ben, for that introduction. Although I have to say, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how comfortable I am being associated with 50 years of experience. So have we really been doing that this long? Yes, that is uh, eons in the technology industry, but uh, it's worth mentioning. Uh, I, it's kind of a rhetorical question because I know the answer is, in fact, that yes, we do have that much experience, but uh, I guess that's a good thing. So welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to dive in right here. We're, we're going to talk about first about uh, uh, why are we talking about PowerShell? Uh, I, you know, no idea how much experience, uh, you know, all, all of you may or may not have, but uh, um, I personally would argue that PowerShell is probably one of the most, um, no pun intended, one of the most powerful tools that uh, has been provided in Windows. But it's also arguably uh, perhaps one of the most underutilized tools in Windows. I mean, I, I'm, many users, of course, have probably heard of it or seen it, but I don't know how many actually use it. Uh, I say this because uh, just a, a unofficial survey of developers and uh, people I know within the industry. Sure, we've heard of it, but how much do you use it in your daily work? And uh, I can say that uh, in adding PowerShell to Ultra Edit and in working with it, um, it really should be more of a tool. And, and anyone who is a developer or a power user, it should be one of your tools. And that's, and that's what we're going to talk about here. <clears throat> you know, PowerShell is available to pretty much anyone on a Windows platform. Um, it's now also available cross-platform, and we'll talk about that a little later in the presentation. Uh, you can uh, PowerShell is invaluable for automating tasks, for managing your applications, for managing your local system, for managing your remote systems. Uh, it's it's scale, you know, it scales from your individual local system up to multiple systems, your network, and you know, entire collections of systems. Uh, allows you to access and manage your data, your system's data, uh, remote systems data. Uh, and it is it, it is uh, inherently extensible by adding uh, additional functionality through script writing, which we're going to talk about that today. Uh, you can also add uh, your own commandlets, which is the, uh, uh, the, the, the available built-in commands in PowerShell are referred to as commandlets. And uh, that pool of commandlets can be added to by, by uh, of course, by Microsoft, but by third-party developers and by you yourself. So that... Uh, uh, really just that collection of features I just uh, described makes PowerShell just an incredible tool to add to anyone's tool set. And that's that's why we're talking about it today. So let's, 
move on to we're going we're to jump into developing with PowerShell using Ultra Edit. And uh, <clears throat> first, we're going to talk about some initial setup uh, requirements to get started in Ultra Edit. This isn't limited to Ultra Edit. There's a few little quirks when you first start out with PowerShell uh, that uh, may be somewhat obtuse, may 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 throw you for just a second. And we're just going to we're going to cover those just to make sure that if you're not familiar with PowerShell that you can get past those initial hurdles. Uh, we're going to create and edit a very simple uh, script in Ultra Edit. We're going to show you how to execute uh, snippets of code, how to edit, uh, I mean, how to execute snippets of code, how to edit, how to execute scripts. Sorry for that. Uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, just some additional items about how to get additional help with uh, PowerShell syntax and commandlets. And uh, uh, then just a, an additional item that once you're working with scripts, uh, you might want to add a, a the potential for a user interface scripts. We're going to walk through all those pretty quickly. And then after we finish this, we're going to move into some real world examples of using PowerShell. So let me get started with this. <clears throat> well, bear with me just a second. I'm uh, switching over to our demo system so we can uh, proceed. All right, everyone should be able to see my screen with Ultra Edits. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing we're talking about is when you, uh, if you've got a recent version of Ultra Edit, you'll see that there is now a PowerShell window available. You can access that from the Layouts tab in our ribbon. You can activate that here. And once you have the PowerShell window there, you can, of course, uh, enter any PowerShell commands and use it like a normal PowerShell window. But one of the things we've also included is the ability to, to uh, uh, do PowerShell script editing, executing a PowerShell scripts. And we're going to walk through that first. But before we do that, <clears throat> let, me, uh, let, me, let me go get a script. I'm just going to grab a script out of here that I've already got set up. Uh, this script would display all installed apps, but let's try to run that. Just, just to give an example of one of the initial hurdles you run into. So when you try to run this script, you'll see that it generated an error. The reason it did this is because by default, PowerShell scripting for most users is restricted or, or not enabled. So the first thing you want to do when you're starting to work with PowerShell is you're going to need to enable scripting for you, the user. And this isn't really a security mechanism like you would think of security because you're in control of it. So you can set your own uh, accessibility to PowerShell. There's, there's, this isn't like something where you need an admin to at least assuming you're uh, in control of your system and you're not in an organization that might be governed by a group policy. You can uh, set your own execution policy here. And I'm just going to set this so that for me, the current user, I can run any script locally that I created myself. This remote sign means that if a script is from outside of my local system, it has to be signed in order to run. This prevents though, if you just download some random script and try to execute it, um, that you don't get caught by something nefarious. But now by setting this, I can now run any script that's on my local system that I created on my local system or that I've set to be local to my system. So now I've got this script and now we'll just look at this and verify that it runs. And you'll see that it just put up a whole list of, of all the uh, apps that are available on this on this machine. And that script did, in fact, in, uh, run correctly. Now, one thing I touched on briefly there is I talked about having remote sign scripts or scripts that are not from the local system. Well, you're going to want to you're going to want to go to the Internet and look at what's available in scripting. And there's an enormous library of scripts that are out there. In fact, we've got some links that are at the end of this presentation that will take you to some resources where you can look at PowerShell uh, scripts that are available uh, from Microsoft and from uh, other locations. Uh, so you're going to want to want run remote scripts and the majority of them are not going to be signed. So you're going to need to need to know how to get that. So as part of this initial setup, is we've we've I've shown you how to run a script within Ultra Edit or from just a standard PowerShell window. You have to set that execution policy. 
if you have a remote script, there is one more step. So we're gonna look at that real quick. Let's go grab a script. And I'm gonna grab this, see what is this? This is a list system info. That, that could be useful being able to list system info. So let's download that script real quick. And we'll save that to the system. And then we'll switch back to Ultra Edit. Let's open that script. Apparently I can find it. Apparently it's not finished downloading. <laughs> Hold on. Ah, uh, there we go. The browser was catching me up there too from a security standpoint. Okay, so now that should be available. List system info, let's open that. Now I've already enabled the ability to run scripts, but when I go to run this script, it's gonna error out again. So now this isn't us, this isn't, you know, trust me, if I could make this easier for you, I would, but uh, this is something you're gonna run into, just getting set up to run scripts through Ultra Ed or through just a standard PowerShell window. You can go into Windows Explorer to a script you just downloaded. You can right click that script. You can bring up properties and then you can go here and you can unblock the script. Now this assumes that you're sure this is a script you want to run, that you verified that it's safe. We don't want to cause any issues for any users, but uh, we, I've already looked at this script and I'm satisfied that it doesn't pose any risk. So I'm going to click unblock, hit okay. And now I'm going to come back here and I'm gonna run that script and it should bring up a list of system info. This may take just a second. I know this script can take just a little bit of time because it's actually looking at everything on your system and pulling up all that information. So hold on just a second. There it goes, it pulled up everything. You see that that's a, a script that's probably quite useful to many people right there. As you can look at it's it's displaying all the information for the system and it did run correctly. So there you go. So now at a minimum, you can run a local script and you can run a remote script and we've covered how to enable those, both of those aspects. So now let's move on to actually creating a brand new script. I'm gonna get these out of my way, start with an empty edit window. And what I'm going to do is I wanna create a new script. So uh, I wanna use, I have a template set up that has a uh, basic template for a PowerShell script. So I'm gonna enable PowerShell syntax highlighting and then I'm gonna go over to our template list and I'm gonna use this new script. This is just a very simple outline of a script. And I'm gonna put in that, well, the, you know, the traditional thing to do for any new programming language or scripting is the tried and true hello world. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna break with convention, let's stick with that. So I'm gonna just output And we have a simple hello world script. I've got that and I'm going to run that script, which it will require me to save that. So let's do that. And we'll save that script and then it will run and you will see that it is output, hello PowerShell. Oh, actually made a little, that doesn't matter too much, but just trying to space that out a little bit to make it more visible. There we go. Single quotes and double quotes do matter. There we go, hello PowerShell. You can see that right there. And now you have your first script. It's pretty straightforward. And of course this doesn't do much, but it does show you the basics of you set up a script, you put some content in, you can run it directly from Ultra Edit. That's pretty straightforward. Another thing we've added here that I've got here is that you can execute snippets. In this case, what I mean by a snippet is just any fragment of code that's in your PowerShell script. Let's start with something simple, which is just the write host command. I'm just gonna select that. I'm gonna to go to PowerShell. I'm gonna hit run selection. When I do that, it outputs it down here. You can see that it executed the command and it executed just the command. It didn't execute the entire script this time, just that single command and wrote that output there. Uh, being able to run just a segment of your script while you're working through it can be extremely useful for being able to, you've got a section of code, you wanna see what it does or you're looking, you want to quickly run through, you don't want to you know, work with modifying your whole script or you want to just make a small modification, check that. Being able to run just a selection is quite useful there. 
So you've started with this and you want to know more about PowerShell. You want to know about what you can do. So, uh, you know, PowerShell has a great help feature already built in. You can just type get help in the PowerShell window. If I can type, sorry about that. <clears throat> and you'll see it displays the, this is the help for get help. And you just have to do get help in a command. So let's do a command we've already used, uh, write host. And it gives you all of the, the various syntax, tells you what the command is, tells you all the syntax for it, gives you a description of how it would be used, and then it gives you related uh, topics to look at. And you can see there's a lot of different write commands covering different types of output, debugging, error, output, progress, so forth. So using this, you can kind of explore PowerShell, explore the syntax, and find more capabilities as, as, as you're working through this. Um, now, all of these commands are, are as I refer to them as uh, commandlets, and they're they're built into PowerShell, and they can be added in, ex uh, uh, and they're extensible. But that list of commandlets is quite large, and we actually have a real quick script here that I'm going to go ahead and run that will give you the full list of commandlets. And you can see as it keeps scrolling, it's it, there's a lot of capabilities here uh, and all of those are that again goes back to underscore what I was saying about the the power of PowerShell and uh, with the help of using git help with these commandlets like for instance I could do git help and I could do um, you know let's just pick one wait event and it's going to tell me everything I need to know in, you know, in terms of syntax for wait event, and you can do that. If you have the ability to get the list of all the commandlets and you have the get help feature to investigate all those commandlets, you can build your vocabulary for PowerShell. So combining that is incredibly powerful. So we've covered how to create a script, edit a script, execute, get help on your scripts to expand your PowerShell knowledge. Um, one more thing, this is kind of a, just kind of a, uh, kind of throwing this in randomly, but it, it's something, that, that comes up in conversation with PowerShell. You know, it's a scripting language. So well, what if I want to do a little more with that? Um, I, I, I personally don't advocate adding, uh, you know, to using the, I advocate using the appropriate tool for the appropriate job. So I don't think you should have a user interface beyond the command line for your PowerShell scripts. But you may run into situations where you need to put up some minimal interface to gather input from users just to make it easier for users to provide input. So just throwing this out there, you can actually build a UI for your PowerShell scripts. I've got a pre-written script here. And uh, with PowerShell, because it's based on, uh, you know, it's, its underpinnings are .NET, and of course, it pretty much uh, it provides a shell over pretty much the entire Windows operating system, but basically giving you access to .NET, and that includes the UI elements from .NET. Uh, Windows forms and so forth. So in PowerShell, you can create a window and you'll, I'm not going to go over this in detail, but you can create a window. You can see we're adding buttons, labels, and creating a list box. So when I run this script, that's what you're going to see. Puts up a, a form. You can select an item, hit OK. And in your script down here, you'll see it tells you what item you got from the form. So if necessary, again, I'm not advocating that uh, PowerShell scripts need user interfaces, uh, but if necessary and it works for your workflow and your particular uh, uh, use case, you can add a user interface to PowerShell, and that's just one more element that can really push you forward in PowerShell. All right, we've covered everything on that, so let's move on to the next. We have real-world PowerShell examples. Uh, you, you guys can't see the slide, actually, <laughs> of course, because I'm still in the demo screen, but uh, I'm going to start walking through some demos. The first demo I'm going to do is talk about gathering system information. You've already seen some of that. I would uh, listed um, all of the commandlets that are available. There's plenty of other things you can do like with PowerShell. You can pretty much interrogate any aspect of your system. Uh, let's look. Uh, let's look at uh, just something simple like drives. Uh, if you'd like to look at the uh, drives available on your system, kind of like I said, then the, this is a simple script, but useful. I can run that script, and you'll see it gives me interrogate system, determines the drives, tells me how much space is used. Just you know, just a basic list of the the drives available in the system. Uh, perhaps you're interested in the services that are available on your system. There's a script for that. 
that's that's kind of been the running theme for PowerShell is there's pretty much going to be a script for anything that you can think of to interrogate your system, data sources, and so forth. And uh, see what else we got here. Uh, list of apps, command list. I think we've covered most of the the basic items there. Um, so let's see. Let's move on. Let's see, gather system information. We covered that. Uh, let's look at running other applications and utilities. Once we have this PowerShell window in Ultra Edit, and and we do, and that really opens up some additional avenues we can pursue. Like for instance, what other things can we do besides just run PowerShell scripts? Well, anything that uses a a terminal or console, you can run through the PowerShell window. And this is something that uh, we're going to be exploring uh, in future features and, and, and versions of Ultra Ed, and we'll talk about that later. But just to give you an example, uh, I can use the PowerShell window, I can use it as an SSH window. So for instance, I could SSH to a server. And now I've SSHed over to a, uh, a Linux server my personal server, but I've SSHed over to a Linux server, and you can see it's uh, you can see from the output that I'm there and it's running Ubuntu, and uh, and and now I can use it as a standard SSH window, no problem. Uh, perhaps I want to uh, have a on my local system. Now uh, I want to have maybe I'm more uh, familiar and comfortable with a Linux shell like the Bash shell. Well, I can launch that. Uh, this case, it's using the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, and I happen to have Ubuntu installed on this machine as part of that Windows subsystem for Linux. But if you have that installed, you can just type bash, and now I have a fully functional Linux bash shell available in Ultra Edit running in this PowerShell instance, and I can do any commands there that I would expect to be able to do. And what else? Uh, well, Maybe you're not uh, truly comfortable with PowerShell yet. Maybe you want to start slow with PowerShell, but want to be able to fall back on your traditional command prompt for Windows. So you can just type CMD, and now you're you're no longer in PowerShell. You're now in the regular Windows command prompt that's been around for a very long time, um, and that's accessible to you here. And finally, uh, if you have some other console application you know, that may be a little more involved, um, it's very likely will run without modification in this PowerShell environment. Something that's been around a long time is uh, GNU's Midnight Commander, which is a uh, console-based uh, uh, file manager. Let me run that. Can you take a look at that? There you go. And uh, I now in here, I could move through these directories, I can manage files, and, and again, anything you can do in a console, you can do in the PowerShell window, and it's you can leverage each one of those additional utilities. So I think I've walked through all of those samples. I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn this over to Ben. Ben, are you ready to start with your demos? I'm ready. All right, so I'm switching this over to Ben. And take it away. All right. Um, let's see here. Just one second. There we go. I wanted to share with a clean background so I don't have any distractions. Um, so yeah, Brad, thanks for running through uh, some of the some of the various applications of PowerShell. Um, very interesting. Uh, I have a couple of scripts that I have put together to demo um, what you can do within PowerShell when it's connected to Ultra Edit or how you might connect PowerShell to Ultra Edit. I've heard PowerShell or seen PowerShell actually described as something like a glue uh, that for Windows, that basically uh, is what you use to pull together disparate um applications or services or whatever and it just fills in all of the cracks where you really wish that these two programs could talk to each other or whatever uh, powershell is very good for that and so um my first script here that i threw together <laughs> really quickly 
is a script to um, download and open a GitHub repository. Uh, so I'll briefly walk through how this script works and, um, and then I'll actually demo it and you can see uh, the end result. So the script <clears throat> takes uh, two parameters, actually one required parameter and an optional parameter. Um, the first parameter is the owner and the project of the GitHub repository that you want to open. And that is in this owner slash project format. And then the second optional parameter is the branch name, which if not provided, will just default to master. So once those parameters are provided along with the script, um, then it actually executes. And I'm going to collapse this function for now. Uh, but the function doesn't run until it's actually called, which is down here below the function. So I have this variable repo, which calls my save GitHub repository function, and I pass in uh, to the function, the owner and project, and the branch if it's provided. And then this function will actually return the name of the folder that's extracted from the downloaded repository. And so then I can call ultra edit on that returned value. And this FNI flag here uh, forces a new instance of ultra edit. So it's not opening in my currently running inst instance. So we'll take a look here at the function itself. And you can see here that the uh, two parameters are declared up here at the top. And this is somewhat redundant um, for this particular example. It might make more sense to write just more procedural PowerShell um, and not establish a function to do this. But I wanted to show you that it is possible to declare functions in PowerShell. Um, and it can be quite useful especially if you you know let's say you wanted to download multiple github repositories at once then rather than scripting all of that out for each different uh repository you could just call the function repeatedly so we do some string manipulation here on the passed in project um, which uh, powershell has some great string manipulation functionality and then we set up the url to download from and then the actual downloaded file, which will be in zip format. Uh, we write some uh, status information for the user as we're downloading the URL. And then here, uh, we actually call the .NET library uh, web client to be able to download the file. And this is one of the big differences between PowerShell and the regular command prompt. PowerShell gives you direct access to the .NET library on Windows, which is just an enormous, a vast library of all kinds of great functionality that you can use uh, to do all kinds of things on Windows and even beyond um, <clears throat> on, on other platforms as well. But this saves a ton of time in being able to call uh, this object, this web client object and have it download the file for me. Uh, once the file is downloaded um, then i'm going to actually unzip the file and extract it rel using a relative path into a downloads folder and then i get the folder path of the extracted folder and that is what i return so that ultra edit knows what what to open so let's say that i am you know searching on github for some powershell scripts and i say all right this rambling cookie monster guy with a name like that he's got to have some interesting scripts so what i can do is actually copy the uh the title of the uh, repository here and then this is what i pass into my powershell script so i'll go ahead and call or type the the name of the script there Thanks for correcting my incorrect forward slash windows. And then I can use control V or shift insert to paste in that repository. And oh, I've got some errors. Looks like I failed to clean out my previous uh, download. So I'm gonna come over here. Yep, that is the problem. It's trying to create files where files already exist. And I'll call it again after I've deleted those. All right, so now we see that the file was downloaded and that brief blue fat flash that you saw there was PowerShell actually extracting, uh, extracting the zip file. And then um, the call to ultra edit is completed. I have a new instance of ultra edit here over in my file explorer opened to the folder that was downloaded and extracted. And from here, I can browse through uh, this particular GitHub users collection 
of PowerShell scripts. So all of that in one command, that just uh, demonstrates how PowerShell can save you a lot of manual steps, especially if you're doing something repeatedly over and over in Windows. So I like to move on to a, uh, a little bit more complex uh, uh, PowerShell example here. And I set out to see if it was possible to use PowerShell to um, monitor a folder of files and on any changes to those files, um, any modifications to those files, copy the changed files over to a remote server using SSH. So I put together a script that's uh, something of a proof of concept. Let's see here. There it is, watch and transfer. And uh, I'll briefly walk through the different steps of this script. Now, what really makes this script work is calling the .NET library file system watcher, okay? So again, this is something that PowerShell uh, makes available to you that is you're, you're going to find if you do any sort of work in PowerShell, any sort of heavy kind of work, um, you're going to find that having the .NET library available is just an indispensable tool. Um, all kinds of functionality available and there's a file system watcher object that we can instantiate here in our PowerShell script that will watch a folder that we pass in and it will allow us to execute actions depending on the type of events of changes that occur in that folder. So we set some properties of the file system watcher here including uh, watching for subdirectories. Um, I'm not actually my demo is rather simple, so <laughs> I'm not doing a whole folder structure here, uh, but you can watch sub subdirectories, and then this is the property that you enable to actually raise the events. And then here in this action script block, this is where we define um, all of the actual uh, script actions that will occur on events um, in the folder, uh, on change events in the folder. And you can see up here that we collect some information. Actually, I, I provide here uh, the remote uh, server information uh, to know where to sync the changes to. And I'm using an SSH key uh, rather than hard coding in a password. Highly recommend use SSH keys. Um, Open SSH is included with Windows. If you don't, if it's not installed, you can easily add it via the add or remove features in Windows. Um, and then, I collect, uh, the script collects some information about the event that occurs, the name, uh, the path, all those sorts of things. And then I do some path manipulation here to get just the name of the file or just the path of the file and that sort of thing so that I can marry up the, the path differences between the local Windows system and the remote server. Uh, we do some write, uh, notifications to let the user know that uh, that a change has been detected here and then down here in the switch statement uh, we actually switch the code path depending upon what type of change occurred so there are four different states of changes the change state uh, the created state the deleted and the renamed events um, and then so we can define what happens for each one of those events separately. Now you're gonna see a lot of redundant code here. I actually ran out of time. And if I had extra time, I would have cleaned some of this up and consolidated some of this, maybe use some functions and that sort of thing so that I'm not repeating myself for each one of these. But you can see that this allows us, uh, using the switch statement allows us to, uh, uh, do some different things depending on what happened with the change files. So for example, here in the changed code path, um, I'm going to do a secure copy, SCP, um, over to my remote host. Uh, whereas down here in the deleted code path, I'm going to call SSH and do an RMRF. And I know some of you alarm bells are going off seeing this, but uh, you know, for the, for the sake of the demo, um, that's what makes it work. <laughs> Uh, to delete the file from the remote server. And then renaming as well. So with renaming, I can just use the, um, 
the MV command to uh, rename the file on the remote server as well. So one big caveat with this sort of thing, everybody should know this, but I just have to say it anyway, is that make sure if you're if you're ever automating something with PowerShell that is writing files, deleting files, creating files, make sure you've thoroughly tested it. I'm, I'm sure many of us are familiar with the syncing feeling when we rush something into production and we realize that it's deleting more than we expected. It's we've <laughs> misunderstood the script in some way and now we're getting results um, that we did not expect on a production server. So just test, test, test is the message there. Um, and then one thing uh, that we have to think about when it comes to PowerShell scripting is that in general, PowerShell is, is procedural, right? So it runs through a series of commands and then it's finished. It returns, uh, it returns back to the prompt. Well, in this case, we want to run this script an indefinite amount of time because we might be working with a set of files uh, for an hour, two hours, maybe even longer, and we want this PowerShell script to be running the entire time that uh, we're working. <clears throat> if we call the script, uh, if we set up the script and just call it procedurally, then it's going to run, it's going to run fast, it's going to see no changes because we won't have been able to make any changes in the time that it was running, and then it's going to complete. So the way that we work around that is um, we we kind of do a kludge to make it asynchronous. And that happens here in this try statement uh, where we essentially set up a loop of writing out a period to the terminal every second. And that will continue to happen until we hit control C to cancel the script, which you see here. When we hit control C, uh, these uh, events will be unregistered they're actually registered up here. The file system watcher events are registered up here. Um, and we can call our script block um, using the action parameter. And uh, we can use these identifiers to determine which event triggers which code path. And so while our loop is running, while these periods are being written out to the, to the output window or, or the uh, terminal window, um, it will be listening or watching for any changes to our files. So let's go ahead and do a demo of that. Uh, first, before I do that, I wanna connect to my remote server and just show you that um, my sync folder here, as soon as we get connected, is totally empty. So normally, you know, in, in a normal scenario, you probably would start with uh the same the same set of files local and remote right um but just for the sake of this demo so you can see things happening more easily i've chosen to keep this empty so i will come over here into windows explorer get over into my watch folder and we will open up first file pull this over into a new tab group here before we make a change Let's go ahead and call our script. All right, so you can see that this infinite loop of uh, writing out a period is now running and the script will continue to run forever until I hit control C to cancel it. So we'll come over into a file that's in the folder being watched and make an update. And we can see here that PowerShell has, or specifically the file system watcher has identified the update and has um, issued the command to copy the updated file over to our remote server. So we can come back over here to our FTP view, and refresh, and there is first file. Now, what happens if we have a bunch of files that we make changes to all at once? Well, if we're running synchronously, then only that first change is going to be picked up because while PowerShell is processing uh, that first file, um, it's going to be ignoring anything else that happens, any other events that occur. However, because we've registered these events um, in this handler here, we've registered these file system watcher events, it enables us to uh, run code to execute script blocks asynchronously, which means that we can modify multiple files at once and PowerShell will deal 
with each one of those modifications and their associated code paths separately. So to demonstrate that, I will open these four files here and we'll go ahead and update them all. I'm not saving them yet. I'm getting them ready though. And we will uh, do a save all here in ultra edit to save them all at once. All right, so all four files, and you can see here um, that PowerShell has detected all four file change events and has executed appropriate actions based on those events. So to verify that, we'll come over to our FTP view, and there they all are. All right. The last two, um, the last two items we want to look at here are the deletion and the renaming of files. So um, neither of these files are yet on the server. I'm going to open them both up to get them there. So now delete me and rename me should be on the server. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and delete uh, the delete me file. Let's make sure that this happens. All right, we see here that the uh, the event was uh, the event was seen and that we had the rmrf command here um, on the issue to the to the remote server and if we refresh delete me is gone let's try the same with rename again the event was picked up and we see the mv command issued to the remote server and if we refresh over here rename me has been renamed to rename me too so these are just a couple of simple demos of what you can do with powershell uh, scripts and uh, i hope they were useful to you you know this file system watcher uh, is something that um, you might not use it to copy uh, copy files to production you're probably going to use git or some other system for uh, deploying files to production but uh, you can do all kinds of cool things with it like if you want to monitor a uh, source code repository or you want to monitor a very sensitive network share, that sort of thing, and receive notifications or even an email notification when uh, there's been changes, you can do that. So lots of cool stuff there. Um, with that, that ends my demonstrations. I'm going to, um, I'm going to stop sharing here and hand things over to Johnny, who will be sharing some of his demos as well. Hello. Thank you, Ben. Yep, do you have the, okay, great. You've got control, great job. Uh, I've got three scripts here. Uh, I kind of designed my scripts based out of uh, supporting uh, ultra edit uh, so I have one that uh, dumps the registry uh, the ultra edit registry key and then I have another one that gets all the environment variables and then I have a third that basically zips up your settings directory and then it emails it to support uh, so my first one, I'm not gonna go too in depth. We're kind of getting low on time. Uh, so um, I'm just gonna brief overview and then I'm just gonna run the scripts. So I wrote a, uh, a function here that uh, just basically dumps the registry into a file. And I've set mine up so that they all write to a file except for the email script. And then uh, it opens the, the file up in ultra edit. So that's what that function does. And then here you see that I have like a brief um, output text and then I open the file here. So if I run the script, And there it is. My next gets all the environment variables from the system. 
and also writes it to a file and then opens it in UltraEdit. Oh. Wow, I need to learn how to type. Don't forget you use tab for autocomplete, Johnny. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> and then, as you can see, it that this dumps all the environment variables from the system. And then my final one, which is kind of a favorite. Oh, I didn't show the script. Is it basically copies your um, <clears throat> settings directory uh, except for the restore um, directory which has all your temporary files in it and then uh, it zips that up and then it emails it to support and I've got some stuff at the top of the script that has my you know password and stuff so I'm not showing any of that um, but it's a neat script you can actually do the uh, uh, this section here with all the 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 email configuration. You can actually do that in one function call, but I wanted to show all the 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 code for it. So that shows you the zipping up of the, or copying and zipping up of the the data. And then it completes. Um, now I've tested this and I've gone to our support folder, but I didn't want to show our support folder. So um, you'll just have to trust me on this, but it uh, it sends that information to us. And uh, I th that's just a brief overview of what you can do. What I really like about PowerShell, uh, the commands is, um, you know, it, it you, like Brad had said before, you have all the power of .NET. So I like that. I also like that, um, you know, I've been doing development for many, many years. Uh, the the way that the 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 PowerShell commands and stuff are all set up, it basically it's like writing its own documentation. So I like that about PowerShell as well. Um, and that is all I have, and I will be passing it back to Bradley. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Ben both of you for uh, moving through those demos and samples. Uh, I'm going to try to move a little quicker Quicker uh, now. We've, we're kind of running out of time, but uh, so I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on the next uh, few items. I want to talk briefly about uh, cross-platform PowerShell. PowerShell uh, uh, it's called PowerShell Core. PowerShell is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. <clears throat> um, this is something that uh, um, uh, PowerShell, you know, it started out on Windows, but they they open sourced it. I believe in 2016 they open sourced it, and when they did that, it's it's been made available on multiple platforms, and so that you can you can write scripts. In fact, some of the scripts, um, I think some of the scripts we looked at had some conditional operation for whether it was on Linux or uh, a Mac or Windows. But if not, there's plenty of scripts out there that will work on all three platforms. You know, depending on what they're doing. Um, and so because this is available, because uh, the, the PowerShell environment brings so much with it, you know, like I demonstrated being able to do other commands and other applications through PowerShell, we're going to add this, in fact, we've already added it to uh, Ultra, to our, to the various Ultra Edit, Ultra Compare applications that run on Mac and Linux. And um, for the next version of Ultra Edit for Mac and Linux, which will be going to beta, uh, sometime in the next few weeks, 
uh, it will have PowerShell core functionality enabled as that will be as part of the beta. So if anyone's interested in uh, trying that out, just let us know and uh, we'll uh, make sure that the beta is available to you when it's released, uh, uh, you know, in a few weeks. So uh, that covers that. And then uh, more broadly talking about a hey, Johnny and Ben, if you guys have any comments here for this, please uh, chime in on this too. But uh, we're planning a lot more with PowerShell and Ultra Edit. Uh, not just as PowerShell, but uh, because of what it will bring to the application. Um, I, I've got a list here of things here. Um, before I get into detail, uh, Johnny and Ben, is there is there anything specific about what we're planning to do with PowerShell that that jumps out at each, either one of you? Anything on this list, or anything that uh, that you, you thought of independently or hasn't been mentioned? Not really. I mean, we did. We did have someone say in the uh, questions, the Q&A, uh, why is this any better than Ultra Edit in one window and PowerShell in a regular PowerShell window? And it's true that, you know, at the moment, um, there's not much difference, but that is the point of uh, this, this particular slide to kind of share a bit of the roadmap that we're going to be more tightly coupling the integration between the two. So I don't know if you're familiar, the person that asked this, if you're familiar with user tools in Ultra Edit, um, where you can send certain variables, um, including the active selection, to a, uh, a Windows program or a DOS program uh, to create some integration with the editor. Uh, we're definitely planning on that level of integration with PowerShell uh, so that you have a definite advantage in using PowerShell in Ultra Edit. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, all good points, Ben, and, and definitely what we're what we're planning on doing. Uh, you got anything there for Johnny on on uh, on PowerShell or or what you'd like to see in PowerShell and Ultra Edit? No, I mean, except for like like Ben was talking about, well, we we plan on exposing more of our app to PowerShell, and then um, we've also had discussions about integrating it with uh, uh, our our plugin support so that you can um, run commands, PowerShell commands from uh, plugins or vice versa. You can, you can run our scripts from PowerShell. Yeah, right. and I would also say that the command palette integration is pretty exciting as well. I love using the command palette. Um, pretty much all of ultra edits functionality is available right there and i'm a I, I like to type i don't like to point and click with the mouse so being able to issue a powershell command from the command palette or even just open the window i think that's personally that's pretty exciting yeah i definitely agree with all that um i, I just uh kind of kind of uh, reiterate what they just said is that that is something that uh is a focus moving forward with uh, the next versions of ultra edit especially with the 2024 series uh which will uh we'll see the first release of that in march is that uh, uh what what johnny and uh, ben both said is more integration tying them closer together pr uh, bringing them to, together uh so that it, you don't have you don't have just PowerShell or just Ultra Edit. You you can do both from both. So um, just speaking in terms of our JavaScript environment that we have with Ultra Edit, so you can write scripts that can uh, uh, take advantage of all the features of Ultra Edit, but do that with JavaScript. Um, the idea there is that you would be able to call out to PowerShell from a JavaScript, an, an Ultra Edit JavaScript script, and be able to bring in. So so if you've done any scripting in Ultra Edit. Uh, to script Ultra Edit, you would be able to leverage the full capabilities of PowerShell, and which means basically the entire power of of Windows and .NET, into a JavaScript uh, uh, runtime. While well, you know, because if you've I don't know if you've done any if you haven't done any Ultra Edit scripting, this isn't going to make a lot of sense to you. But with an Ultra Edit JavaScript, you have access to the Ultra Edit API, so that you can. Uh, access documents, you can access our windows, you can pull information, you can write files, you can open files, create files, uh, a, a range of things you can do that directly affect Ultra Edit, you can do from one of our scripts. And if we add PowerShell to that, then you'll be able to do both. You'll be able to tie into Ultra Edit's capabilities, you'll be able to call out to PowerShell, do input and output from PowerShell, 
and then uh, I'll run that back through into Ultra Edit. Uh, that's from the JavaScript side. And Ben mentioned the command palette. The command palette would work in that in the, when you would issue a command within our command palette, you could, you know, this is something where we're, you know, we don't have a time frame for this, but we definitely would like to see it, is there would be the ability to enter PowerShell syntax that would get routed to a PowerShell instance or PowerShell window. Uh, so kind of give you a shortcut to getting into PowerShell. Uh, it would also let you pull in anything that's in the command palette. You could send that to PowerShell that way. Uh, so, I mean, that, that that's just kind of like a very brief overview of, of some of the integrations we're looking at doing. Same thing with uh, our project and file views. You know, if, if, you can, if you can have a script in a project or you can browse to a script in the file view, you should be able to run it directly from there. You can't do that today, but you should be able to, is right-click a script and say run, or maybe right-click a script and run with parameters, and, and it would pop up a, you know, a quick little dialog that you could enter some parameters and run the PowerShell script straight from there, and the output would get routed to our PowerShell window, or it would spawn a new PowerShell window in Ultra Edit. Um, lots of capabilities there that, that we would like to see. We'd also like to have multiple PowerShell windows. One PowerShell window is great, but if you're uh, like me and you, you've got a past history of working with Linux and Unix, uh, you never had one console window open, you had 10. So the same thing, I, I you know, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're, getting, we're getting more up to speed with PowerShell, we're learning more about it, we're appreciating it, but I, I see a similar uh, aspect to it is I don't want one PowerShell window open. I want several open so I can have multiple things going on in different contexts. So we're going to add that. Uh, we're going to uh, look at uh, taking our existing script list or add a new script list so that you can uh, keep most used PowerShell scripts in that list and you can uh, add keyboard shortcuts or, or add them directly to the ribbon or add them directly to the toolbar and menus so that you can execute those scripts that way. Um, and then one thing Johnny was showcasing there um, uh, that we'd like to see is that uh, bringing all these commands from PowerShell in means that we can we can embed them directly into our applications so that for support purposes. So if you have an issue with us and you'd like to report something, then we can, uh, instead of having to spend a lot of time writing custom code to get the information we need, PowerShell already has a lot of that information available to us. So we can take that capability build a report and then to, uh, you the user can say hey I, I want to generate a report and send it to ultra edit support personnel so they can take a look at this so we generate the report let you take a look at it powershell would have done all the heavy lifting to generate that report and then if you're you know happy with the information uh, you hit send and that would get sent to us i mean that would really streamline the support process for our products and we'd already talked about, uh, I, I showcased just being able to, of course, you can directly launch things in PowerShell. Well, much like Ben mentioned with user tools and create PowerShell, we'd like to have PowerShell tools so that you set up a tool and you can say, make it a PowerShell instance and have it do this. So when you want to have a, uh, a bash window in Ultra Edit, you just set that tool up or we have it pre-configured and you just click a button to access in the menu and the ribbon, hit a keystroke, and you have a new bash window. You didn't have to open a PowerShell window and type it, you would just get a bash window. And that would also open up that we could do more interactions with these, these additional tools. So we can add additional integrations for those tools because PowerShell makes that possible. Um, if I miss anything, guys, I ran through a lot there real fast. No, I think that's good. We're coming up on time, but we do have a few questions here. Um, I wanted to, start with one that's been asked multiple times which is can we do debugging of powershell scripts in ultra edit uh the answer right now is no however um we are as brad just um as brad just shared in the in the upcoming roadmap or or informal roadmap uh, we are expanding PowerShell support in Ultra Edit. So we're going to be evaluating. I think um, Brad will be in charge of this as PM, but evaluating what it is that users want to see. And if there is a large demand for debugging, then that's something that I'm sure we'll seriously consider. Absolutely. Uh, and we, you know, go ahead. I don't know if there's any debugging. You know, we're not PowerShell experts yet <laughs> uh and i don't know if there's any debugging just through the powershell console uh so if if there is then th that obviously you can still do in our console um 
as far as I know. Now, I was very intrigued by the uh, PowerShell debugging questions because in UE Studio, we have debugging that you can set up for like uh, C applications and JavaScript. So I, I, I had al already asked our su support uh, manager to create a ticket to investigate, uh, you know, the debugging in, in PowerShell. So that yeah. and I think, might and be I think cool to question. set, set uh, debug points and stuff and go through yeah. line by line. Yeah, specifically, people are interested in setting breakpoints, being able to to evaluate variables uh, while running scripts, that sort of thing. Um, oh, maybe a couple more quick questions here, since I know we're at the top of the hour already. Um, are there any considerations when it comes to encoding? So, for example, this user has uh, his ultra edit set up to create new files as UTF-8. Will that cause a problem? with PowerShell? Uh, that's an, you know, that's an interesting question in that I was actually looking at an issue with that today with some, with some functionality I was testing and, uh, um, uh, it gets complicated. <laughs> it depends on how uh, PowerShell is set up, how your system is set up, um, what basic, what your, uh, OEM code page is set to, whether using the default PowerShell, our PowerShell, uh, there's the new Windows terminal, which is fully Unicode enabled, which we've not talked about at all. Um, and depending on the context, uh, uh, there can, of course, there. the answer is yes, there can be, there can be code page encoding and Unicode issues. And I wish I had a simple answer for you there, but the, the thing is, is that, that it isn't a simple situation. It's not just on our end, it's on Microsoft's end as well. Uh, so we're we're definitely looking at that and we will continue to look at that. Uh, uh, Ultra Edit, uh, you know, in my mind does a good job of handling Unicode and uh, that's been something and, and, and continues to handle legacy code pages. And that's something we've continued to focus on, make sure we support that. Uh, and that's gonna extend to PowerShell. So if you run into an issue, be sure and let us know and uh, it'll it'll be, be you know up, up on our list there that we're definitely gonna need to take a look at that. Yeah, I, I will say I tried to get a little cute with my PowerShell script and use some Unicode characters instead of just the period <laughs> and it did not work. And um, I was not interested in trying to figure out why, but it was definitely yeah. something in PowerShell. Yeah, I, I, have, I have looked at that and I looked at the background behind it and, I, and it, the conclusion that I came to was, is we're going to have to do a lot more work on this. Um, but a lot of it's not on our end. So uh, there's there's some there's some questions and some research to be done and also determine how does Microsoft intend us to do this. And uh, I looked at some of the solutions, but again, they're not, they're not simple answers. Right. All right. One more question here. Um, are there any limitations on importing modules into Ultra Edit PowerShell environment like AD? The answer there is no, there are no limitations. Um, what you can do in PowerShell outside of Ultra Edit is what you can do with PowerShell inside of Ultra Edit. So if that is our intent. If you do uh, uh, encounter a limitation, it's not intentional. Um, and we would definitely want to know about that. All right, we are uh, four minutes past the end time of our webinar here, so we really need to wrap up. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending, everyone for giving us your time, and for those of you who sent in questions. Um, we will have a recording of this webinar available. It will be sent out to everyone who registered. We'll also uh, make available the scripts if any of you are interested in those. And um, if you have any questions, uh, any questions that we weren't able to get to today, we will try to get to those. But if you're having problems or issues running Ultra Edit or running PowerShell in Ultra Edit, please reach out to us at support at ultraedit.com. We have a support team standing by. They usually answer within an hour or so of receiving messages, and you'll have experts available to help you get up and running with PowerShell. Uh, also, thanks to Brad and Johnny and our behind the scenes guy, our QA manager, Troy, who has been answering questions. Um, we appreciate all the work that went into this webinar. So thank you, everyone, and we'll hopefully see you on the next one.